What are you doing, Doc? Well, if you want to know the truth, I'm picking up dog poo. <laughs> That's the first thing I got to do in the morning. Uh, today, we're going to talk about seed germination. And we're not just going to talk about grass seed germination, but seed generation, seed germination in general. And I'm going to give you some tips. This is the time of year where cool season guys, you are out there probably thinking about doing some reseeding. Warm season guys, we're getting to the point where we can actually do some warm season seeding. But you need to understand what impacts seed germination, time to germination, what's going to help your seed germination, and some tips. I'm going to cover all that as quick as I can, so hold on. So before I begin, don't forget we cover a lot of seeding and seed issues in the Bermuda Lawn Guide. Uh, excuse me, in, in the Lawn Guides. And there's a Bermuda Lawn Guide, a Zoysia Lawn Guide, and a Cool Season Guide. Each one has its own individual website. They're up there, they're free, you just use them. There's nothing to sign up, you don't do anything. So get the lawn guides and uh, that's about it. So before I begin, I want you to, uh, I'm gonna give you an example of something. Now I know a lot of you are here for grass seeds, but let's talk about corn and why corn. We have a corn field up here and I had a really fast germination. But let me give you an example of how temperature, just the air temperature, not even soil temperature, because air temperature kind of determines your soil temperature, how that can impact seeding. I believe it was University of California came out with a great chart. And on the description below, I'll link to any of the products I'm talking about, I'll link to on that page. Plus I'm gonna put this information and this chart down there. Corn, if you plant corn and it's 50 degrees out, your germination time is approximately 21 days. If you plant corn and it's 86 degrees out, pretty much consistently, it's 3.7 days. Let me say that again. 50 degrees, 21 days, 86 degrees, 3.7 days. Is that crazy? So temperature has a lot to do with time germination. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna be going on Google, how long for uh, Bermuda grass to germinate? And you're gonna see it's gonna be uh, seven to 21 days. <laughs> Well, what is it? Well, there are a bunch of different factors. How, how well did you do your seeding? Are you keeping your seeds wet because dry seeds don't germinate? Are you keeping them wet? And are you watering frequently? And what's the temperature? So if you look at that temperature zone, you may see, okay, Bermuda seed, your soil temperature needs to be 63 to, to 80 degrees. Well, typically speaking for almost all seeds, if you have a range, the best range for seeds, the higher end of that range is gonna give you your faster germination time. That's the truth. So I'll give you a quick uh, example story. My irrigation guys out here, we're out here putting in the irrigation on the backyard. And he was talking to me, he said, yeah, a couple weeks ago or, or a week or two ago, I put out some uh, Bermuda seed and I'm watering it and frequently, well, it's like, dude, I told him, I said, don't even worry about your Bermuda seed right now. I said, you really need to be, Daytime temperatures need to be in the, consistently in the 80s. That's when you want to seed Bermuda. That's when, that's when the germination works the best. You can go out there and water every single day, every single day, and go out and look, and go out and look, and there's no germination. Same thing with zoysia. Zoysia takes a long time to germinate, especially at the lower end of that range. So here's what I'm telling you. I want you to understand that look for your range on your seeds and it'll tell you either on your bag or you can find the information on the website. Um, maybe I'll even put it on that page below. But there's a range for certain seeds. And if you look at the range, you're better off to wait a little bit for that warmer temperature to come in. And it may just be a week or two before you get a warm, a warm sprout come in. The other thing is, is watering. So let's talk about watering. Guys, I've said this, I've repeated this time and time again, and it's in, the, it's in the lawn guides, I talk about this, but dry seeds don't germinate. So it's a pain in the butt sometimes to do seeding. Now at the beach house, we came in and at the beach house, there was just nasty, rough, nasty concrete, all kinds of crap in that yard. So basically we came in and we scraped off that whole yard. We brought in about two or three inches of soil and I planted zoysia seed. I put in an irrigation system before I did this and I planted zoysia. And basically I ran my irrigation system three to four times a day. <laughs> and that's kind of what you need to do. So late morning, I would run it. And then uh, afternoon I would run it. And then I always do a late, uh, a late afternoon, early evening run. And why is that? 
it's because number one, seeds like to germinate um, a lot of time in the dark. They like the dark. They like to germinate in the dark. Number two, as the temperature cools, you get less evaporation. So if you go right when that sun is setting at dusk, the temperature is starting to, what happens? You get this dew on the grass run your irrigation system. Your seeds will stay dry for like, I mean, will stay wet for like 14 hours because you're applying that water at the right time. And what's the right time? When the temperatures are dropping at night, go out and run your irrigation system. You wanna ignore all everything that you hear about watering at night when you're talking about seed germination. Lawns, yes, it's not good to water at night. I get it, you wanna water, blah, blah, blah. But you, when it comes to seed germination, that nighttime watering is really important because a lot of seeds like to germinate in the dark. Uh, there was a study about mycorrhizal fungi and does it help seed germination? And it's, it's the studies are a little bit sort of inconclusive at this point, but when they put mycorrhizal fungi treatments on seeds and they put them in the dark, they seeded, they germinated almost twice as fast as non-treated seeds. Got it? So that's why it's not a bad idea. If you're putting out some seed, put out a little bit of dirt booster, not a whole bunch, just put out a light coat of dirt booster because it has that mycorrhizal fungi. Is it gonna help your seed germination? I don't know, but based on some of the studies that are coming out, I would say yes, it's not a bad idea. Now, let's talk about fertilizers. The first thing I'm gonna ask you, someone says, well, should I fertilize, put down fertilizer? When should I fertilize my new seed? And my first question is gonna be to you, what's your phosphorus level? And most people look at me and go, well, I don't know. <laughs> so the first thing, if you are planning a seeding project immediately, in the description below, I link to one of these rapid tests. Get a soil test done. Go out, take several soil samples all around your yard, crumble it up, dry it up, do the soil test, and figure out what your soil test is. That's the best thing to do. Now, in the absence of a soil test, I'm going to tell you to put out just a light coat of something like a PGF Complete. What's a light coat? The bag rate's a light coat, or a little bit less. Just put down a little bit of nutrients. So when that seed germinates, it actually has some nutrients. Um, a seed doesn't need a whole bunch of nutrients to germinate and to start that growing process, but once it starts, it's gonna want some nutrients in the soil. So fertilizers, the majority of fertilizers, because they're slow release, you wanna put it down before you seed or at the same time as seeding, and that's fine. You won't, you won't have any issues with that. So this lawn right here, we're doing our seeding experiment game on. This was the worst soil you could possibly have. I mean, it looked yellow, white clay. It was nasty. <laughs> and I just came in here with a skid steer and I just scraped this real quick. And I was thinking to myself, ah, oh, later on we'll do something. So what we did is we kept seeding it and seeding it and seeding it and finally it took. Now I got the best take was gonna be, the best take that I had was in obviously rye because rye is one of the faster germinating seeds that you can get on the market so an annual ryegrass then i came right behind it so what have we got down here i've got down the annual ryegrass i've got down um, spf hybrid 30 which is a blue grass then i've got combat extreme which is a mix of fescues and let me tell you what this lawn right now is so thick i can i mean it's just absolutely amazing but what I'm gonna do is, after this irrigation system's installed, and once my temperatures warm up, and what's my range for zoysia seed? The eight daytime temperatures in the 80s, that's when I wanna seed. Don't do it before, then you'd probably be waiting a long time. Um, I'll come out and I'll do a zoysia seed. Just like the beach house, we put down zoysia seed, but at the beach house, I was able to run my irrigation system, you know, three or four times a day. And it took probably about 10 to 12 days for that seed to germinate, even though I did it in the warmer temperatures. Um, zoysia seed, something like a zoysia bermuda, I mean, you'll see a wide range. It'll say seven to 21 days. And it's like, dude, well, what's the impact? And a lot of that impact has to do with how, making sure that it stays wet and making sure that the temperatures are warm enough and making sure you do that nighttime water. Gosh, is he beautiful or what? He is absolutely gorgeous. Eat them bugs, eat them seeds. Funny. So yesterday, uh, the good witch was up here. If you didn't watch that video, watch her, she's nuts. <laughs> 
but she's really knowledgeable. She's actually really smart. She's really knowledgeable when it comes to plants. And she's worked with me for uh, three years now and all my vegetable stuff. But we came up here and I didn't notice this until a couple of days ago. But this is our corn field, we'll call it. We just ran a couple strips of corn. And what's amazing to us was the difference in the rows where we put dirt booster into the soil along with the seeds. I'll give you, so I've got one, two, three, four rows that were treated with dirt booster, mainly three, but four. But here's the row, the transition that you can see. This one had dirt booster from here over did not. And just that difference right there is just incredible. Look at it. Look at the height of the corn and then look at, look at the color. So this is dark green, excuse me, this is light green, dark green. This corn over here is probably 10 to 12 inches. This corn is five to six. There's some baby grass coming up right in here. So on this lawn project, we've put down dirt booster and we've top applied it, basically. If you are going to be tilling and you can put down some dirt booster when you till, that's the best way to do it. However, you can top apply it. So a little bit of nutrients, PGF complete, dirt booster. And the nice thing about dirt booster is you don't have to worry about over fertilizing because dirt booster is just basically all natural product. It doesn't contain anything synthetic. What it does is it improves your soil. You're gonna add organic matter, biochar, humic acid, and it's gonna create that living soil. It was extremely demonstrated up there. That was shocking. It did not increase germination time. All the corn basically germinated at the same time, but the early plant health was absolutely amazing. And I think that's one of the keys is that if you can get something like Dirt Booster into the soil prior to your seeding, your soil health is gonna be almost double. I mean, it, that was shocking, that corn experiment we did up there. So guys, remember, uh, when you're doing your seeding projects, don't overthink it, but you need to think about temperature, you need to think about watering, trying to create a little bit of a healthy soil, and you'll have some good results. I'll keep you posted on this and I've got a bunch more seeding stuff. We'll actually take you up to the gardens. I'll show you some of the results up there of the seedings. But anyways, uh, I cut this grass and maybe I'll go ahead and I'll put some of that cutting up right now. And then that's about it. I got some trees that are going to be cut down and I hear thunder rumbling in the background. So I don't know what's going to happen today. Now tell me that isn't sexy as hell. Is there any other word for that? Dude, for having this nasty clay material, taking a skid steer and just raking this and then seeding and seeding, this is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, I don't know what to say. I'm just so happy with this. We have been now, lately we've just been putting down PGF Complete and dirt booster. That's it. It's hot. It's 80 degrees out here today. This is, of course, everything is in this. Everything from a annual rye to the SPF hybrid um, blue to the combat extreme. I mean, just, I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed, dude. I really am. 
So anyways, it's the hot time of day. I'm waiting for John and Jeff to come in with my manure, but dude, I'm just worn out. I need something to drink. It's been a long day already. But that, that my friends, besides a couple of weak spots in here, that just looks amazing. I mean, seriously, could you ask for more than that from what we had? Look how thick that is. Look at that. Look how, I mean, there's no way you can get in there. That's amazing. That is truly amazing. Mm -hmm. 